the world's biggest airline collector. Japan Airlines came out in 1977. The Hawaiian long dress. Very traditional KLM blue. It's Northwest Orient Regal Imperial Service. The blanket, the pillow, the headset. The Garuda 1995 timetable here. MD11 and 747-200. My favorite United Airlines meal setup ever. This sugar is from 1950s. It is. And this is from Malaysian Airlines. And they used this setup for probably 30 years. Look at the old ticket jackets here. Compared to these days, we use iPhone. I wonder if you can guess what airline this crazy green and orange fabric came from. I think you've flown this airline more than anybody. This is my favorite, look. So guys, out of all the airline collection I've shown you, what's your favorite? Today I'm visiting the world's biggest airline collector. He invited me to his house. He said there's even an airport terminal at his house. Hi Sam, welcome to my pretend aviation terminal here in Los Angeles, California. This looks and feels just like an airport did probably about 25, 30 years ago. One of the reasons that I recreated this look and feel is because when I was young, when I walked into an airport terminal and saw every airline's brand and all the different counters, I literally had to run up to every single counter and get luggage tags and timetables and ticket jackets. Right now we have seven different airlines represented from the past, but I love each and every one of these brands. Sam, since you were previously a United Airlines flyer, let me invite you back over behind the check-in desk of this United Airlines ticket counter that you might remember from your past. Everything back here looks and feels just like a ticker counter would have back then. And you'll remember it was crazy days back then where you actually had paper tickets and paper luggage tags depicting the destination that you were gonna fly to. So if you were to have flown from Hong Kong to San Francisco, for example, you would have got this old luggage tag put on top of your bag, just like this. This bag tag would have got stapled to your United ticket jacket, and you might remember this from the past. This acted as the boarding pass for United Airlines. Oh wow, the tulip. Yeah, Whoa. the United tulip. And check-in back then was done via a computer that looked just like this. In fact, this was an original Apollo computer, which was the United Airlines reservation system back then. Wow, I remember in the early 90s, I used to fly my first United Business class. At that time was this tag. It was called a connoisseur class. I loved how colorful boarding passes were. So this happens to be vintage Continental Airlines boarding passes, and you can see the blue and the orange. This was from their 747 Golden Jet Services. Um, recreated all those as well. And old machines like this, where they used to stamp your credit card um, and charge slips, like literally everything that might have been in a ticket counter for the 70s and 80s. Outside of Pan Am, America's second greatest airline, was TWA. And I'm gonna show you back how they used to do seat assignments for a passenger in the 1970s. There was a sticker seat map just like this. This is the TWA Lockheed 1011. And you would pull, pull off the seat you desired just like this and stick it on the boarding pass like this. But these days we use an app and choose ourselves. I don't like it. Um, because I like to save every single boarding pass from every flight I've ever been on and actually look at the seat map and choose the seat with a sticker. Anthony, it's really cool. Where did you get all these vintage airline seats from? These are actually generic airline seats and I buy these in bulk, but actually replace all the seat covers. And the way we do that is the next area that I'm gonna show you is with a gentleman named Marmick who works here and works in our upholstery shop and recreates the airline seat fabric for me of any airline that I could possibly dream of. And so Continental was one that I actually loved from a chi my childhood and these are the, the finished product of what it looks like when we complete the whole process. Here's my favorite KLM seat. Very traditional KLM blue with the business class headrest and all the meal setup blankets, pillows and everything that went with it. This is actually one of my favorite brands. It's Northwest Orient Regal Imperial Service. It's a very 80s product. They called these colors burgundy and fawn. And you can see I had every little detail that went with this product. The amenity kit, the menus, the blanket, the pillow, the headset, 
all the dishware from the meal setup. And I do this with each one of the replications that I made the seat fabric for. This is our interior seat shop. And so it's actually in this space right here where we remake aircraft interiors from seat fabrics to wall coverings. And you know, in order to bring an airline's brand to life, one of the most important things you have to do is actually replicate what the seats and the wall coverings look like. And so you'll see on this table, I've actually got a lot of different designs that we're actually working on right now. And this is an Air New Zealand uh, fabric from their first class wow. cabin from the 1980s. Um, you can see here we're working on some KLM interiors. Um, those are some headrests we're making for vintage American airline seats. This is uh, my friend Armic, who is actually responsible for creating all of our seats and headrests and interior designs. And right now he's actually working on recreating seat fabric for the first class cabin from Air India. And so we look at a guide that we provide him for every airline that I'm trying to replicate. And what Armic does is he recreates in specific detail what that seat cover and seat looked like back in the day. I wonder if you can guess what airline this crazy green and orange fabric came from. This one here? Wow, it's so colorful. It's one of the most colorful one I've seen. My guess is very tropical country, like, you know, very, very warm and lots of flowers. Um, but I think it's Beeman, Bangladesh, because I mm. remember Beeman has floral seats on the DC-10. Yeah. That's actually a really good guess. It's not Beeman, uh, but Beeman does have a very distinctive pattern. So this is actually Korean Airlines from the 1970s. Korean Air? Yeah. And can Unbelievable. You, and can you imagine an entire 747 with this green seat in it? It was crazy. I like this one. This one looks like some like a shower curtain or something like that, right? <laughs> it looks like a curtain. What, which airline is that? Yeah, so surprisingly, that design is Delta Airlines. That was their first class seats on the Lockheed 1011. Imagine this is the seat back and these would be the headrest that went with this Delta seat. And so you can see how when you put those on there, the seat starts to come alive. And this oh. would have been the Delta product. They would have been side by side like this on the airplane. Hey, stop playing at your own airport, man. Okay, but Sam, I have to point out these seats right here. These are from TWA ambassador class from the 1970s and early 80s. And my favorite part about this is actually this tray setup. Look at the tray liner and the dishware. This is actually really fine china. And I wanna take you back now to the area behind the stage here where I keep literally thousands of sets of vintage airline china from the past. Sam, this is the area that I refer to as the dish area. And it actually contains meal setups from many carriers from many eras, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, even current day. My favorite United Airlines meal setup ever was the Royal Hawaiian service. Look at this fantastic bowl. Oh my bowl God. And the little drink stir that went in all the Mai Tais. What is this? Like the ordering a Mai Tai, they yeah. will put this on? Yep. Oh my God. Yep. I can't believe this one. Like it looks like a canoe, right? Yeah. Like this is where they set up the food. The appetizer? This would have been uh, fruit and like a salad and uh -huh. bread roll. Hawaiian meal. Oh yeah. my gosh. And this is from the 1950s United Airlines. It's with the original embossed, the mainliner napkin, even, wow. the original, even the original sugar packet and the salt and pepper packet. So you're saying this salt and pepper and this sugar is from 1950s? It is. You want to try it? <laughs> 70 years old. Look at this, you even have airline Charlie CA702. What's that code means? That stands for CART 702. This was a 747-200 wide body cart on United Airlines. And inside, look how many I actually have. Every wow. time I flew United Airlines to Hawaii, I would take that stir stick. All right. So I'd you, get a virgin Mai Tai. You order, you order virgin yeah. Mai Tai, you get yeah. these. And wow, I make them give me cool. the stick. Yeah. Very cool. This is another unique one. This was United Airlines bento box for Trans-Pacific flights. They called this Royal Pacific service. Had a place for the miso soup, chopsticks, and various side dishes. Coming to the center of my dishware cage, where I keep all the dishware from many airlines, this is crazy. Look at this place. There's a lot here. It's actually pretty well organized though. And I know where just about every single thing is on all the shelves. But this particular piece of furniture is actually really rare. This is the center console table from a United Airlines 747-200. 
Um, it's an original. I had it shipped here from Oklahoma City about 20 years ago, and I just love it. It reminds me of the past. So depending on the stage of flight, the center console has multi-purposes. When you board, it's usually magazines and newspapers. Then at the cocktail and beverage time, it's glassware and alcohol. And then for meal services, it's usually the tray sets. This is an old Olympic uh, tray setup. And the one thing I love about this, Sam, is the tray liner. Look how detailed What is intricate. exactly tray liner? Show okay. us. So tray liner is the piece of paper that sits on the actual top of the tray. And the reason I love tray liner is that it brings the entire dishware set to life. Like when I'm sitting here eating this, I know I'm on Olympic Airways. This area is a place where I'm actually collecting things that I know that I'm missing. This particular one, this is a BOAC tray. And you can see that I have very few pieces. The good news is I just found all these missing things on eBay this week. So I can't wait till they arrive. Is that where you bought your collection? A lot of collection were bought on eBay? Yeah, eBay was actually probably one of the greatest inventions for people who collect things. And aviation memorabilia, there's no shortage of it on eBay. I shop every single day on eBay for aviation collectors. One of the most colorful airline setups around is actually this one. This is from Malaysian Airlines, and they used this setup for probably 30 years. It's one of my favorite reasons for flying Malaysian Airlines. This here is a center console from Lufthansa 747. Another fantastic piece wow. of aviation furniture. Look at that. Yeah. I like this one, because this one has like drink holders. Yes. and this is for like... the wine bottles. Where'd this come from? This is also Lufthansa? No, this is actually the United Airlines console that was in the 747-400, right at the front of the bulkhead. You're the only console collector I know. I'm probably the only console collector. Welcome, Sam, to the airline uniform section now. And so this area contains uniforms from just about any airline you could name, and it goes all the way down to the back hall there. Uniforms are probably the most difficult part for any serious aviation collector for two reasons. One, because they're super expensive. And two, because most stewardesses or flight attendants who actually wore these at one point in time rarely ever want to part with it. And so you either have to bid on eBay and it usually costs a lot of money and or be lucky enough to know someone who will donate or sell it to you. You just need to have a lots of flight attendant girlfriend that's and true. then you can get their uniform easily that's, without paying for it. That's a great idea. <laughs> uh, this is actually one of my favorites. This is Japan Airlines, came out in 1977, has a fantastic hat with it but this is a really difficult uniform to find. The Singapore Airlines Sarong, I have the red, the traditional blue, and of course the green for the different positions on the aircraft. You recognize this one. Absolutely, look at this. The only one in the world, the Thai dress, Thai Airways. Yeah, my favorite part is when you board Thai Airways, they're all in this uniform through takeoff. It's such a fantastic boarding moment. 30 years ago is this continental orange one, but I love it because think about how the logo is represented on all the pieces, on the shirt and on the scarf just really brings the brand to life on board the airplane. Yeah. And for those of you who might know, this logo right here is affectionately known as the meatball. Meatball. Yeah. One thing you might not know is on almost every single flight to Hawaii, airlines had a special uniform specifically designed just for that flight. They called it a muumuu. And so this is a reflection of just about every airline's muumuu that was worn. This is American. What exactly is a muumuu? A muumuu is like a Hawaiian long dress. Oh. Something like this. And it, it looks floral pattern, but it also looks like a pajama kind of very relaxed, very lazy boy kind of thing. It was, and I've collected them from so many different airlines. That's American, here's Continental, wow. here's a lot of United. Oh my um, gosh. And so even the males had a version, a matching a Hawaiian version, shirt. A Hawaiian shirt. Which airline this is? This is Continental Airlines. Oh my gosh, yeah. it would be pretty cool to wear a Hawaiian shirt to go to work. How comfortable would that be? Yes. I think this is actually my oldest one. This is a United Airlines Moomoo from the 60s. You still have the flower from the 60s? Well, I think someone... Whoa, it's dried up. <laughs> is it a real flower? Yes. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Sam, besides just the uniforms, I have lots of things like the scarves that went with the uniforms, the ladies' silk cravats, uh, many different belts, um, including lots of different shoes. And of cool. course, it wouldn't be complete without a flight bag to carry. Sam, I think you've flown this airline more than anybody. Oh, wow. You have Emirates uniform. Yeah. That's amazing. Wait, I see even here, there's a bag. 
and back and shoes are emirates red bag and red shoes yeah having all the pieces is actually really important well actually Anthony, i'm going to show you a picture i was in the emirates stewart uniform sam probably the most important part of any airline uniform is the hat and so this is my hat cabinet and this is actually one of the craziest ones this is brand of airlines this is from the 60s and um can you just imagine someone wearing this hat on an airplane today? I just got this one a couple weeks ago. This is British Airways. Oh, very Some traditional. Oh, I found this one. This is my favorite. Look, Emirates. Actually, I think this hat is mine. I've done it many times. Do you like it? So behind all these uniforms, eh? You have something behind as well? I do. Hidden. I actually collect. Oh my oh, god, this is like Alibaba, the like, door opens. Yeah, luggage tags from lots of different airlines, and I have several of these. Look at this logo. Oh yeah. I love the era of timetables. Why technology is great. This is how you used to actually get airline schedules. I remember these United timetable because when I was a kid in Hong Kong, I used to go to United, uh, the ticket office in Hong Kong at Landmark Tower and get these timetable. And I remember and all the 800 flight numbers going out to Asia, 900 flight numbers to Europe. And wow, I'm searching here. Look at this. Whoa. Look at this, Lufthansa. Oh my God, I just found out from the Garuda 1995 timetable here. Garuda flies MD-11 from Abu Dhabi Two stops to Denpasar, Bali. Unbelievable, with MD-11 and 747-200 in 1995. Probably the fitness timetable in those era, 1982 by PIA, Pakistani Airline. And uh, what is so cool about it is the last page where they show the uh, fleet of Pakistan, at that time 707, A300, DC-10, and 747. And here you can see in 1982, it cost 9,406 rupee flying Karachi London round trip. Sam, the next item to look at is airline ticket jackets. And let me just warn you, uh -huh. I like these almost as much as I like tray liners. Really? Yeah. Show me. Because all the branding that exists on these ticket wallets brings the airline to life. And let's just look at some of my favorites here. Look at this fantastic one from Philippine Airlines. Whoa. And Cathay Pacific, look how look green. Look at green, yes. Here's one from oh here, my India, God. the little Maharaja. Maharaja. Qantas Captain's Club. How about this one from Iran Air? Oh, wow. Isn't that great. Look at the old ticket jackets here. Compared to these days, we use iPhone. Look at all these paths here on the phone. These were the days before the technology exists. Ticket jackets. So guys, out of all the airline collection I've shown you, what's your favorite? Is it all the uniform behind, like uh, what I'm wearing? Or is the tray, the tray liner? Or is it the timetable? Or is it the ticket jackets? Or is it because all the airplane seats or all of them? Tell me in the comments. He's got such a great collection. I love this United Toilet sign. I'm actually gonna take this away while he's still busy sorting out his collection. Uh, Sam, Sam, can oh. you hold on for a second? Uh, can yes, I ask sir. where you're going with that United Airlines tulip? Oh, uh, I don't know. I hope you can give it to me. Uh, I actually think I need to inspect your suitcase. Oh, no.